Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, that's obvious, because it was recently announced as the time that you've heard this video. It's time for the Battle in New York 2024, so it's Lotto season. So I'm going to be talking about the Lotto, uh, the Lotto event that's going to be coming pretty soon, and also the band that's going to be coming with it, because there's no sense in separating Odysseus and Tesla from this, because literally... They were here just a couple days ago. <laughs> if you didn't want them during the other time, you're likely not going to want them now. But whatever. Let's get right into it. Battle in New York 2024. Let's go. So, uh, yes, thank God this is still under construction. So the Battle in New York, it should start March 15th, 2024. You have need to have cleared Anastasia. If you have not been taking advantage of the current event that's going on with Lost Belt 1... Get on it if you want to get a, be a part of Battle in New York. There's a lot of stuff that's in here that is going to be very, like, nice and useful to have. So I would suggest getting on it and getting there as soon as possible. And because the event isn't, like, necessarily, like, story-focused, it is here for exactly, I think, maybe a week, if any. Yeah, it's here for, like, two weeks, basically. It says the 15th, but it likely means that the game start goes into maintenance on the 15th and then actually starts the 16th when it enters maintenance. I'm not sure about that, actually. No, uh, the 15th? No, okay, so it will go into maintenance on the 14th, and it'll, um, by the time it rolls over, it'll be the 15th. Okay, so that makes sense. So yeah, it'll be two weeks. Sorry, sometimes I forget what the time zone is. It's really weird for NA. Uh, but yeah, it's basically gonna last about two weeks, uh, for how long it lasts, and because there's nothing story-related really all that much about it, that means you do have time to clear Anastasia and get involved in it. You are gonna miss some of the early kind of fight things, but all you'll be missing out in, on is apples, and you should be able to still do all the challenge quests and stuff like that if you hurry and beat Anastasia. So, okay, Battle in New York. What's the idea here? We're gonna be fighting. We're, there's gonna be a battle in New York. <laughs> And I guess this time the space verse is going to be involved, which is the weird thing that Mysterious Heroine X comes from. The servant verse, that's what it's called. Um, it will likely be involved because I know the Tesla has something involved in the sp in the in the servant verse, and Odysseus looks like he comes from the servant verse, even though that's just how Greek heroes look like in Fago. So uh, none of the info is on here. <laughs> 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 no okay here we go so thanks to the jp1 let's look the vet mechanics are pretty easy it's literally just clear the tournament yo it's so simple you'll be getting uh three forms of currency there's gonna be the burger there's gonna be the fries and there's gonna be is that a hot dog okay it's a hot dog not a burger it's and space fries um i thought those were chili cheese fries or something and then the lotto currency which is this raffle ticket uh, the CE that you'll get will help you in grinding for the ticket itself, and if you want to grind better the materials, then it's probably better for you to go and pull on the gotcha and get those CEs. I will say that in the history of doing the Lotto event, I have never, never, <laughs> uh, really felt it was worth getting the CEs to get grinding the materials better, and I've always been able to grind basically everything. Um, by just doing it normally. Because just because you're just naturally, like, grinding everything. Like, a lot of the times, even when there's a unit during a lotto event and I get these CEs, you know what I end up doing? I end up replacing these CEs immediately for this one. So I still end up with a full, like, yo, this five, this was six units, and then occasionally if I can't do all six, and then I'll go into one of these. And that's just kind of how it goes. So it's not 100% like worth it to actually go for it, unless you just super like the art or the CE itself is really good. And there'll be other stuff related to it. Like every other event, there'll be stuff to grind out normally, and then there'll be things to exchange for it and the materials, which we can look at right here. Um, the, the event shop, which is right here. So inside the event shop, uh, there'll be cosmic medallions, which are going to be inside the lotto itself. And using this, you'll be able to get the... Uh, the CC here, which is going to be the Wizard of Menlo Park, the Colossal Trojan Horse of Obliteration, and the Colonel of, Automa uh, of Automaton. Those are the command codes that come with it, and then there will be the the code, the keys, for the code openers for Quick, Arts, and Buster, along with a code removal, and then also a crystallized lore, and then after you get all those, just, yo, exchanges for money, because that's all you'll need, ever need them for. In terms of the Meteor Burgers, things you can get, you can get the Aegis Stage 2 Costume Dress. 
unlock permit, a uh, permit, along with one of the CE, which is the Cosmo Caldea High School. And then you'll just the other things that you can exchange with the burger are the monuments for Archer, Rider, and Assassin, the Genesis Egg, Dawn Light Reactor Core, the Crown of Radiant Silver, a Golden Foe, and a Crystallized Lore, and then going to the Galaxy Hot Dog. It's the Igus Stage 3 costume dress unlock permit, and then also the Cosmo Caldea High School, another one of those. A silver version of the previous statue pieces that I mentioned beforehand for Archer, uh, Rider, and Assassin. Uh, Dragon's Reverse Scale, Snake Jewel, Tiny Bell of Amnesty, a Golden Foe. And then you can exchange it for a hot dog if you want, but I only do that at the end when I'm done. And then for the fries... Again, the sea once more, along with the Divine Leyline Spiriton, Knight of Weeping Iron Steak, the Magical Sir, the Magical Fluid, the, the Bronze, not the Bronze Foe, the Silver Foes, 20 of each, um, and another Golden Foe, and another Crystallized Lore, and then you can exchange these for a hot dog if you want. If you want to get absolutely everything, you're going to need 3,600 burgers, 2,800 hot dogs, and 2,500 french fries. Um... In terms of the CEs, we'll look at them right here. The Cosmo Caldea High School, this is the thing that we'll be using uh, for grinding. It will have a starting NP of give, giving 30%, and then when it's max limit broken, it gives it 50%. You'll get crit damage up and an arts crit damage as well, which is not going to really matter uh, very much for... If you are lotto grinding, you likely are... Mm, actually, we'll see. Uh, we'll look into some of the main quest stuff. Uh, check ready, which is going to be the thing you'll be using for the challenge quest for the most part. Because this is going to give 100% when you're in the event itself, or 200% when it's max limit broken. You can use these for grinding if you badly need it. The reason I said I hesitated on this is because there might be a case where one of the... They've been doing this a little bit more recently, but sometimes they'll have uh, fights where all you'll need to do is like fight a singular enemy. And in that case, it's like, oh yeah, then crit damage... And Arch Crit would actually be kind of good because then you're just getting a bunch of crit stars, hitting them with a crit bomb, and then attacking that way. That's why I was like, eh, it might be useful in some scenarios. Not the, the greatest of all time. Check ready. That's going to be the event. Guts revive one time, get back with a single HP, and then get some MP damage and then some MP generation. The Vent Command Codes, which is again, like I mentioned before, the Wizard of Menlo Park increases the engraved cards of MP generation by 5% when attacking with the engraved card, increases own MP damage by 10% for one turn. The Colossal Trojan Horse of Obliteration when attacking with the engraved card, gain 2 crit stars and remove 1 attack buff from the target. The Colonel Aut uh, Automaton, if engraved on an arts card, increases star absorption by 50% and crit damage by 10 and those are what you can expect there. There'll be a strengthening for Tesla, which will make him very good. And Thomas Edison, shoutouts to Gay for Edison, the biggest Thomas Edison fan I know. We lost you to Final Fantasy XIV, but you're still on my friends list somewhere with your two level 140 Thomas Edisons, I think. Or level two, level 120. I forget what part Gay for Edison left the game, but I at least have their friend list still up. Uh, yeah, he'll be buffed. It'll be very sad to see that it will not be strengthened. Unless they come back just specifically for this one Edison buff, which would be funny. Uh, the Da Vinci Shop. Nero Claudius costume dress will be added to the Da Vinci Workshop. To get it, you need to have cleared Fuyuki. And the Silk of Venus costume will be present as a playable quest in Caldea Gate after exchanging costume keys for the Da Vinci Shop. These two right here. Two very good Nero ones. Uh, the bloomers are free if you've cleared Septem, otherwise it costs 5, and the Silk Venus is unlock is free if you clear Septem, otherwise it costs 5. And if for whatever reason you just can't hold yourself and you need it now, <laughs> you spend the 5 to get either one of them, you will be refunded when you clear Septem and you'll get your rare Mana Prisms back. I don't know who out here is that crazy, <laughs> especially because Septem is very early on. <laughs> Who wants to go like, yo, let me just get this deer. I need it now. I need her in the bloomers and I need her in the Venus unlock right now before I even finish Septem. It's important to me. But for you, you'll get those uh, mana prisms back if you choose to do it that way. Some other stuff I forgot because yeah, the Odysseus gets these cool costume dresses right here. Like I said, for some reason, as him as a Greek servant, I don't like the idea of him looking like this. But in terms of the servant versus... <laughs> crazy universe of space people seems perfectly fine to me don't know how to explain it but it is 
And I don't remember if we actually have the Tesla animation update already, but if we don't have it already in the game, I assume it's already in, but if it's not in already, we get it here. Um, uh, doi 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 doi. Next, next, next. More things. Event shop, main quest. Yeah, like the main quest, very easy. Just follow along and then you'll do battles. It's not that hard. It's very bare. There's like three fights <laughs> at maximum. A lot of this is going to be focused around this. For what you'll be grinding, so, if you've never done the lotto before, this is how it kind of goes. During the first, like, four days, these five fights will be available, which will feature these drops in them. Uh, as you can see here, for example, this fight, which features uh, um, uh, Golden on it, um, it will drop Rider Gem and then also Dragon Fang. And then in the next one, it will drop uh, the Megatom, and then the next one, it drops ice, uh, ice crystals, and the dawn light, dawn light reactor core, and then on galaxy, the primordial langua, and then the Idrisil seed, and then the next one on space, you kind of got spirit roots, meteor horseshoe, and the way the base it basically boils down is that this one is used typically best for grinding out bronze. This is good for typing out the silver. This is good for getting the gold, and this is good for getting all three. No, this is not all three. This is the one for... They switch it up occasionally. Excuse me. This is if you only want to grind the specific lotto material, and then on space. This is where you can grind all of them, and they're really good if you just want to get all of them out of the way real quick. And like I said previously, you can see what I mean about weird um, battle formations. You can see it right here. This one starts with one. And then it kind of goes two, and then it goes three, and then it's also Rider, Saber, <laughs> Rider. And then the second one is a Saber and Rider. And then the last one is Rider, Saber, Rider, <laughs> which is very annoying. It uh, doesn't matter if you're running Buster, though, because uh, you can just literally Buster your way through this. But it's something to keep in mind if you're running quick or you are running um, some other thing. You might want to start thinking of your team build. If you're running Buster, it doesn't really matter because it's not that hard to get to 100%, at least in my... In my head, as someone who's running Vich and Oberon, in which case I'm like, ah, this isn't really much of a problem. But for Arts and Quick, you might want to think a little bit more about how you want to address it. Something to think about. Next, the second league. Same as the first league, except for brand new dudes. And the, the material that you'll be grinding in here, in the first island, you'll have Void Refuse. Along with uh, a Tuplet Twin Crystals. And then in Continental, you'll have the Phoenix Feather. Uh, and then the next one, Planet, you'll have Fruit of Longevity, and then the Medal of the Great Knight. And then in Galaxy, you'll have the Demonic Flame of Hazuki, and the Giant's Ring. And then on the final one of this one, which is Space, uh, it is Scarab of Wisdom, it is the Homunculus Baby, and this is another one that is a little bit easier, at least, because it's 2, 1, 3, which isn't too bad. Uh, and then the rest of these are at least very simple, like, you know, basic. Not bad. The thing to also keep in mind of this is that if you have a specific material that you want to grind for while you're going for the basic one, usually what I do is I usually just pick space and I don't care. But that's also because I'm an older account. And I don't necessarily care for a bunch of these materials because I already have, like, hundreds of them. But if you're a newer player or you're someone who's basically fiending for certain ones, like, if any one of these had bones, I would kind of go, like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go in there for bones. Like when I was an early player, I never had enough Phoenix Plum. So this would have been amazing. Now in terms of the drop rates, I don't actually know them. They should be out. If you check Game Press, they should be out. Actually, I'm curious if Game Press has them now. Hold up. Let me pause real quick. Okay, it's not on Game Press yet, but thankfully this already exists. Cause like I said, this happened two years ago. <laughs> so green means that the way that this basically goes down is that in terms of drop material for round one, if it's green, that means it has about a 26.27% drop rate, which means it's generally pretty good. If it's red, you really shouldn't bother. And this is, I believe, is typically how much you would compare to trying and doing your stamina stuff. So sometimes it's not really worth grinding out. Like you can see this one, if you were specifically looking for the seed, it's pretty good because if you compare this to the free quests, you can see in the free quest, it actually costs just a little bit more stamina to go for it. And the drop rate is kind considerably a lot less than normal so it's actually a good way of kind of going back on there um this is actually very useful so there you go it looks like out of these just to let you know from looking at them the ones that are 
worth it are actually just this seed and then nothing else. <laughs> Everything else has a significantly lower draw for you. Some of them pretty okay, but nothing like too amazing or anything like that. Let me see if I can back up just a little bit more. Just so I can show the full thing. No, it really doesn't want it. Okay, I'm going to have to do something I don't like doing. There we go. There we go. So yeah, there you go. You can see the drop rates right there before I return it back to normal. Um, not really worth it to go too crazy. It's more like, hey, it's a bonus if it's available to you if you want to try and go for it there while you're already grinding out lotto material. That's how I kind of see it. Doesn't look like there's anything that's actually super good for grinding this specific event, but it is what it is. I'll pause and then we can return back to the normal. Okay, pausing right now. All right, and back to normal. And yeah, I said, like, the third league may as well just go over them very quickly. This drops the, the Idrisil seed for the first one. It drops Dragon Fang for the second one. It drops Talon of Chaos for the third one. Chains of the Fool, the last one. Galaxy, it drops the hearts. Space, it drops this. Bell of Amnesty, Bizarre Godwine. And there you go. That's it. All right, one moment again. All right, back at it. And here we are talking about the lotto itself. Uh, yep, yeah, if you've never done the lotto before, the way it basically goes down is that one try costs two tickets, ten tries cost 20. If you want to do 100, it costs 200. If you want to get the full box done, it's going to take 600. And you, for the first 10, once you get the grand prize, which is for the first 10 boxes, for the first five, it's check ready. On the sixth box, it's a lore. And then on for seven through 10, it's a golden foe. Um, you can, you can skip it and go to the next box as soon as you get the grand prize, but once it goes to 11, you will no longer get any chance to skip it, and you'll have to get the entire box. I usually get absolutely everything in the box. It doesn't say that you don't have to skip. Back in the early days of doing this, I did occasionally skip. But nowadays, I just get the full thing, and it doesn't really matter to me, and I'm like, whatever, I, I want all this material for whatever reason. Um, but if you were looking to skip, I would say at least make sure to get the golden apple and the silver apple because those do not repeat um, at all. They, the bronze apples do repeat, but not the other ones. So it'd be a good idea, especially if you're going into the lotto grind and you don't actually have very many golden apples and silver apples. Which I thought everyone was like me and had like 100 golden apples and 200 silver apples and like 400 bronze apples. No, it's not the case. <laughs> I've learned very quickly it is not the case. Now in terms of what's inside the lotto, you got an arrowhead, you got the ghost lanterns, you got the stimulus gunpowder. Heroes proof and bones, all very good materials along with gems for all of the saber classes. All the Saber classes. For Saber, Archer, Lancer, Rider, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker. Um, <coughs> all the gems, blue, red, and gold. So very good if you need to get any of these specific materials. I know, I remember reading someone most recently saying like, Yo, I pulled, pulled Merlin and I have zero caster gems. Here's your chance to get some more caster gems. <laughs> and then you'll also get four Cosmic Medallions, which you can sh exchange in the shop, which I showed you previously. And yeah, that's Lotto. This is the best way to grind if you're a brand new player. Because that's what I did when I was a new player. Is that I usually... In the early days, I just did a little bit. But then eventually I realized this is the number way, one way to do it. And then I get just a buttload of boxes. And I get a whole buttload of things. Uh, like, I'm running low on bones. I'm probably going to have to go pretty deep on this one. Because I am. I have like 10 bones to my name. I don't remember what happened. I pulled a lot of units. Like, I had like, I want to say a surplus of bones for like over 5 years. I had like 200 something bones. Maybe 250 bones. And then I got enough units that use bones. And I'm down to like 10 bones. It is a... Uh, I'm bone dry. <laughs> I do not have any bones. Very sad state of bones. So yeah, there's the lotto. Next, there's the challenge quest, which will be the Battle of New York, the ones from 2018 and 2029, 2029, 2019. Um, completing them gives you a ticket, which so makes it kind of worth to go for, but they are all challenge quests, so they can be pretty tough. Not only that, these, uh, these type of fights really kind of like fortune you. I really don't want to show this because some people really do kind of like not knowing what's going to happen, but just to show an example... Uh, I'll show this one. Actually, that's not that's not one of the ones. The exhibition quest. For so, for example, just to show the first one, the great rice general. He's here. He has specific things that kind of go through the fight. You can see here all the things that he does, 
and all the kind of like different mechanics that are on display and as such some units are better for these types of fights than others um and so it really really requires you to have a box of or a team of units that are good enough to handle this if you're someone who only focuses in on doing grinds and really good at looping these challenge quests are your worst nightmare because there is no way for you to loop these unless you are just insane with it now some of these should be a little bit easier because they are a little bit older so we should have a little bit stronger units at this point like obviously when this came these originally came out there was no vich there was no um pretty sure castori wasn't in the game yet if I, my memory is correct there was no oberon there was nothing like that and so some of these fights some of the newer units can trivialize some of these fights um, but not all of them, obviously. So, they're fun. They're like a puzzle piece. They're more puzzly than anything else, and you need to find the right combination of units. It can be really fun, actually, if you can just give it a try, and you don't mind losing. Thankfully, the cost of actually doing these is like a single AP, or I think even zero AP. So, there's no, there's no problem. Yeah, one, a single AP. Just bring in whoever and try your best. And that is, yeah, all these. There's a bunch of them. I want to do. I want to go in and kind of go in blind. That's why I'm not super reading what he does because I still want to do these with my brother and kind of just screw around and build teams like we did beforehand. If you didn't, uh, the last time we had challenge quest type videos, that's what we did. We just built on teams that we we did draft mode style and tried to see if we could get them to win. And it was a lot of fun to actually see him kind of go like that. So I kind of want to keep that a, a mystery. And also my memories bet, so I don't remember a lot of these. Now, if you've already completed these and you know on, um, they're going to be a little bit easy for me. Don't worry, we have the Tesla Cup, which is like basically a boss rush style thing. So if you don't know... Some friend supports are not eligible. You can attempt any Tesla Cup quest at any time with the exception of the last cup of the cup, which requires to clear the other cups of the same cup. And the Tesla Cup is a combination of past challenge quests from various past events. Once a servant has participated with the, with the within the clear of a Tesla Cup quest, you cannot participate in any other quests of the same cup. They can rejoin the team if you withdraw or fail the battle. You can redo a Tesla Cup quest by resetting your clear status. Once reset, you can reuse the servants that were used in that quest. Enemy information and tips will appear at the beginning of each quest. Quest rewards are obtained only on the first time clear. What does that mean? Is that basically you are seven fights in, and if let's say you want to go for the first fight, you want to try and use... You see these giant hermit crabs, you're here fighting them, you're going to try and do something, you're like, you know what would be good to this? Castoria. That means you cannot use Castoria for these other fights at all. So, <laughs> it is a case of like, that's what I'm saying, it's kind of like a gauntlet, and this really prioritizes a lot of people who have a lot of servants built up. And if you do not have a lot of servants built up, this must be a nightmare for you. But it's okay, because I think clearing this only gets you like this. This is only for if you're here for the challenge. You're here for the, the, the bragging rights to say, yeah, I beat the Tesla Cup. I did that. So you don't have to worry too much. It's There's not even a summon ticket related to one. There's also the Giga Coil. Um, and these only unlock after you have cleared the epilogue. This is for the prologue, and then this is for the epilogue. So more tough things to do. And then also there's other challenge quests as well. Uh, this one is specific to this one event, so I won't go too much into it. Uh, but there you go. There's plenty of events. That I love these specific lotto grinds. Uh, as much as I like Christmas lotto grinds, I like Christmas lotto grinding perfectly fine. But I do like these style lotto grinds where it's a festival. Because they also gives you the chance of doing hard content, which is not something that a lot of... Usually there's only one in a specific event type thing. It's like you do it at the end and then you get the lore and then it's cool. These are like, no, not only can you fight this kind of like hard kind of fight, you also get a summon ticket for it, except for those examples. And then if you don't care about any of that, the grinding that you have to do is some of the best grinding that you can do. So literally it's the best It's the best for both worlds. The people who don't give a shit about grinding at all, they can just literally roll their head across and try and beat these challenge quests and the people who don't give a shit about challenge quests can literally just go grind like crazy it's a perfect kind of setup i feel and then as for someone who likes both you just get overwhelmed because you're like i don't know which one of these to prioritize ah uh, man great times anyway the summoning campaign there'll be two summoning campaigns here's where i'll say about this first one which will come with it i'll save this one for a later date because it features gilgamesh so therefore gilgamesh gets his own video 
Uh, but the one that will be coming with the event, and it's been confirmed, this is the exact same banner that we'll get. It has Odysseus, Nikola Tesla, Nero Claudius, and Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison and Nero Claudius are both story locked. Nero is pretty good. She has a very, like, funny kit. <laughs> they keep buffing her for whatever reason. The Goblet of Wealth, uh, it's super good. Second skill, like you can see, uh, the third skill, which is a hilarious skill, it just a gr grants gut gut status to self three times over five turns, which is uh, this is on a cooldown of ten, which you know, fair enough, because goddamn, this is a lot of just uh, getting guts. And this is obviously based off of the story of um, of how Nero died, but this is also that's uh, the skill that saved my ass countless times when I played Fate Extra, because uh, it was the only way I was ever able to beat it with Nero, because otherwise she would get one shot by everything. But Nero's a pretty fine unit. She's a she is a buster unit. I haven't had the most success with her actually trying to do like lotto kind of bust and grinding. And the reason is is that it only hits once, so it's actually very hard to get your MP back. But thankfully she can be used in other kind of stuff if you just need someone to hit up with an AoE. It can hit pretty strong sometimes. As you can see here, this ability has a chance to give her 44% attack up and 44 defense up. And it also heals her and gives her some arts as well. And then you also gain 10 crit stars every turn for 3 turns. So re it's really funny, but she is a AoE unit that I feel is probably suited a little bit more for challenging fights. Because when else are you ever going to be actually able to use this gut, stat st gut status 3 times 5 turns, if, if not for a challenging fight of some kind. Uh, preferably somewhere on the water side or at a city, <laughs> so she can get the, the full extent of this buff of increasing her um, arts up by 20%. But even if you miss that, it's not that bad. Uh, and, that's Nero. and also, obviously, Nero has a buttload of costumes. She has three. All of them, very good. Very nice costumes. I switched between all of them. And her regular costumes also aren't that aren't uh, that bad. The sprite ones. This is, uh, this is all right, but definitely it's between these three. It's funny that she actually has so many. She can actually make her own. <laughs> she has, like, a new set. It's like, oh, yeah, here's where she was at the beginning of the game. And then she gets all these. So very fun and very good to get. Uh, Thomas Edison is also story locked, which means he is a limited servant with extra steps. I don't think there's very much to say about Edison because not a lot of people really like Edison. I like Edison for uh, for what it's worth. It might just be because of gay for Edison, but I have learned to like Edison over time. I think he's the first one to have this overcharge when Ali's MP by two stages for one turn. He was the progenitor of it all. He started the idea of overcharging even though no one was paying attention to him because he is Thomas Edison for the most part. Uh, even though this is Thomas Edison in the body of a lion with the souls of every single American president inside of him. Um, yeah, I think Edison's a fun unit. I've never been actually able to get him because he's such a pain in the ass to actually get. So I sadly do not have an Edison. I might, um, unfortunately he's not on the Gilgamesh banner, which really sucks because that's the only place I would want to try and get if I was going to ever summon on this banner, it would probably be for Gilgamesh. Just because it's Gilgamesh, but Edison is not on that banner. Shame. His NP is also pretty cool. It shows up like a giant uh, movie thing up in the background. It's really nice and really cool. So there's Thomas Edison. He's story locked. So if you want any of these units, it's likely the best chance to get it. Even though it's a... Nero is on the Odysseus banner and Edison is obviously with Tesla. So keep that in mind when you're going for it. In terms of Odysseus and Tesla, I'll just quickly go over them just because I, their banner was literally here a couple days ago. So for the most part, I think if you are interested in summoning for them, you were either waiting for this banner or you already tried for it. But I'm just going to assume there's not a lot of people who actually want to summon for either one of them. I'll go over Tesla just real quick and say that he is insanely good from what I've been told. I do not have Tesla, so I cannot attain that. But the one time I said, I don't know how good Tesla actually is. I got enough people yelling at me saying, how dare you underplay my goat Tesla, the greatest of all time, to ever do it, Nikola Tesla, how dare you, that I have since then always mentioned that, <laughs> and will never forget and never disperse from the name of Nikola Tesla. He's a very good AoE buster uh, archer. So if you're looking for one of those and you do not like Gilgamesh for whatever reason, Dozens of, dozens of us exist that don't like specifically Archer Gilgamesh. I have at least one other person who said I actually don't care much for Gilgamesh. <laughs> Archer Gilgamesh. Um, there you go. That's the one thing that's I think probably holding back anyone who's an AoE Archer is that if you are a Buster AoE Archer 
Um, the two most popular ones are likely Gilgamesh, and if it's not Gilgamesh, it's Ishtar. And then if it's not them, and if you're looking for someone who's good, then you got Tesla, who will get, who will do you good. And Odysseus is an AOE writer. Um, AOE writer, correct? Yes. I as I, I'm gonna say the same thing I say about Nemo. I don't know enough about Odysseus to say the truth of it because I haven't been able to pull him. But for the most part, he just ends up being forgotten because there's better writer options like either you use mordred for summer mo if you don't have summer mo you can use um da vinci and if you don't use da vinci i guess you can then use odysseus or nemo for in this case but i actually don't know enough about him so feel free to tell me again i would know more about him like i've said countless times every time odysseus shows up i'm actually a big fan of the odyssey the original book that uh poem i guess that uh, Odysseus is ba Greek mythology that Odysseus is based off of, but because of the direction Fago took with him, I'm not actually the biggest fan of his design at all. So it's made me have a negative light about him. That is probably not very fair. So in order to keep it fair, if you actually have, if you're a big fan of Odysseus and you're a big proponent of him, or you know more, feel free to tell me. But for the most part, I just see him as a another archer. <laughs> Another archer, another writer AOE unit, and that's all I can see, unfortunately, for the time being. I... I know. It's sad. I bring it up every single time, but it is what it is. And that's this banner, and that's the first one. And then, obviously, there'll be a Gil Gilgamesh banner coming up right afterwards. And that is the Battle for New York 2024. It says 2022 because I had to go to the JP version because the NA version was literally created... <laughs> On this wiki, two days, like probably a couple minutes ago, when they confirmed the time and the date for it, uh, that's gonna be the event. I look forward to it and have fun for. I'm looking forward to. I have a new phone. I'm ready to test it out. I'm ready to do some of these challenge quests. I'm ready to have some fun. Hopefully, uh, when do these challenge quests start? Is another good question to ask. Uh, not this challenge quest. The battle in New York. Ah, uh, doi do, 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 do. Actually, no, no, it should be a singular day like it was in the, in the previous past, but we'll find out, huh? That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you watched all the way to the end. I appreciate it a whole bunch. As always, if you want to help me out, you can always leave a like. You can always leave a comment. Tell me about anything that I discussed here. I will always read absolutely everything, and I will also gladly hear any opinions that you have about any of the units featured here. The best way, I do not own every single unit in Fago, and the best way for me to do it, it's getting to the point where it's like, for some units, people are just saying like, yo, you should check out someone else's video, and I'm like, I probably should do that, for the most part, but I'm like, just, at that point, I'm like, I, at that point, I should just link their video and say, if I get everything from them, but then I'll get everything from you guys. Hmm. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe I should shut the fuck up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. I'll be back for more fun times with Fago soon. I'm feeling better now <laughs> after a couple days of watching original Dragon Ball and getting time to sew to kind of sit down and think about it. I'm feeling a little bit more like my usual self. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, you guys have a good day. Peace out!